Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. For he is our Savior. He is the one that will put a pep in your step. He is the one that will make you smile when you want to cry. He is the one that will grab you by your hand and lead you home. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel good. I feel happy because Jesus is in this place. The power of God, the power of the Spirit is in this house and it's moving about all over this house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today, besides thanking Jesus, I want to speak to you on the subject about Jesus. And that subject is give it to the one that has all power. I'll say that again. Give it to the one that has all power. Amen. If you have your pen and your paper with you, I want to give you some scriptures to study during the week so that you will understand about the one that has all power. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20 through 21. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 58. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, and the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. And after you study those, you should come back in here saying to smile, because you will realize who the one is that has all power. Who is this one we are talking about? His name, Brother Chambers, is Jesus, All right. the Christ. Amen. That is, for you that don't know, that's God in the flesh. All right. What is it to give, Brother Cooper? Give is to transfer or concede. That is, acknowledge defeat. Realize and know that you don't have the power to conquer what you're going after. Amen? Amen. But you know someone that can. Hmm. His name is Jesus the Christ. He can do anything but fail. And Jesus will handle all of your situations. I'm sorry of repeating. I heard a little bit of what Bert Cooper said last Sunday. And knowing, we should be knowing here in Faith Deliverance Tabernacle that God is in control of everything. Amen. Can't nothing happen unless God gives the okay. I don't care how you try to give the devil credit. The devil don't have no credit. Because he can't do nothing unless Jesus let him. Right. He got to come and ask my father about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your faith and your trust in Jesus. For we know, as Numbers 23 and 19 say, this God is not a man that he should lie, Amen. neither the Son of man that he should repent. Right. Hath he said, listen at this now, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoke, and shall he not make it good? Right. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? Amen. And if you trust in God, you can say to your mouth, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, my strength. In whom I will trust. Amen. My buckler 
and the horn of my salvation and my high time. In other words, church, the Lord is everything I need. Amen. He'll supply all my needs. Even when you go into the military, brother Donald, God will supply your needs in. Amen. He'll move situations out of your life that are not appropriate for you. He'll keep you from going to areas that you shouldn't be in. <laughs> Been there, done that. God will work it out. See, especially when you have somebody praying for you. You may do what's not right, but that person praying for you, God hears them, hear their prayer. And he will work it out. Man. See, the scriptures continues and tells us, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be prayed. So shall I be saved from my enemy. In other words, I'm going to call on the Lord. I'm going to call on Jesus, God in the flesh. That one that has all power. See, we are talking about the one that has all power. His name is Jesus the Christ. Amen. He has all power. There is nothing too hard for my God. All right, Trust the Lord, for he is the same yesterday and today and what? Forever. Forever. In other words, if he did it last time, he'll do it again. If, if, if he healed the man that couldn't see, don't you know he can still do that today? If he healed the woman that had an issue of blood, don't you know he can do the same thing today? <laughs> Cancer don't have no, 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 no little issue, no little thing about it. That's Cancer right. doesn't have the victory. God has victory. Amen. Why? Because God created everything. And if he created everything, that means he created me, Cooper. All right. And if he created me, that means he know what? How to fix me. Amen. Amen. Put your trust in the Good. Lord. Amen. See, that's our problem. A lot of us, we don't forgot how to trust God. See, the Lord, the word of the Lord never changed. It tells me, and see, you you got to stand on God's word. If it say that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Don't you know that means just that? God don't ever change. When my money gets funny, Sister Carter, I think about when he told Peter to go out there and, and look in the fish mouth that he kept. All right. So he had some money to go pay, pay the money that had to be paid. So I know that the Lord can put money in my mailbox. The Lord can make a way out of no way. I don't care how hard it seems. We just have to do what? Trust the Lord. The word said, trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. That was what? He's God. <laughs> That's my word to you. You acknowledge him in all your ways because he's God. And God is in control of everything. Amen. If you don't believe me, ask Pharaoh. Right. Ask him, ain't God in control of everything? Ask him, won't God let frogs and stuff hop up on the steps? Ask him, won't the Lord prepare? Ask, don't, don't ask Pharaoh, because Pharaoh may not. Go ask Moses. <laughs> ask Moses, said, won't the Lord take your little stick, tell you to point it, won't he clear the water, move it out of the way, and then let you walk through on dry land? All right. Hallelujah. All right. Tell me somebody about my God that has all power. There ain't nothing that the God can't do. Amen. I mean nothing. I heard a preacher say, the Lord is so awesome that, 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 that he increased Abraham's faith. Abraham didn't even question God no more. He learned that God was in control. When he went up with his son, Isaac, listen what he said. He told them, so you all wait here. Me and the boy will be back. Now that's faith. That's faith. Although he's going up to the crop, going up there to, to suppose to offer his son as an offering, he knows that the Lord has the power to fix it. God has the power to put there what he needs. 
And what did God do, Cooper? He put a lamb there in the bush. Now you tell me he don't have all power. Amen. My God is a mighty God. All the mother little old gods y'all playing with, y'all gonna leave them playing huh? out. <laughs> God is the only God you can put your trust in. He's never gonna change. He's never gonna change. See, 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 Buddha may be moved somewhere else. But see, God is already where, everywhere. He is everywhere we need him to be. When you walk into the bank for long, God's already there. God can already touch the heart of the person there so that they will say, yes, okay, we can do it. When your finances are low, don't start crying. That's the time for you to start praising the Lord. Thanking God for what he's already done. For he has already fixed your situation, Shirley, before you even open your mouth. You haven't even had to ask God yet. He already worked everything out. Why? Because you're his child. Amen. And if you're his child, he's your father. Amen. And if he's your father, he's the great I am. He's the one that can do anything but faith. He's the one that will go before you and clear your path. I tell people all the time, you may go down a muddy road, but the Lord is going down there first. The Lord will fill up every pothole before you even get there. All right. So you are just walking on smooth ground. And God is so awesome that, oh Lord, have mercy. God will even stop the rain. That's right. He'll say, stop. And it's got to stop. Preacher, how can you say that? Well, if he can speak to the water out there on the way and tell it to halt, then don't you know he can do the same thing today? If we need rain, the Lord can speak and it'll rain. If we're getting too much rain, the Lord can speak and it'll stop. God always knows what we need. We holler, well, Lord, we, we, it, it's been so rough and it's been this and it's been that. Don't you know it couldn't have been like that unless God let it get that way? And don't you know he's going to give victory over this situation that you are going through? All you got to do is what? Ask God. Okay. Ask him. Seek him. Yeah. And knock on the door. Right. And God will open that door. And welcome you on in your house. <laughs> because he's already gone to prepare a place for me. So if God has already gone to open a house up for me, don't you know I'm going to work hard so I can get that house? Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I want my house. I don't know about you, but I want my house. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Trust the Lord, for the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord is the same at all times. The Lord is the same in everything. I don't care what you're going through. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I do care what you're going through, but I know one that can fix it for you. You know, I, 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 the thing is, and and Brooke Cooper always mess with me because I say this, is, is I'm here today to tell you to wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. If you wait on God, God will work things out. I tell you a story of a time that, 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 uh, that we waited on the Lord and we saw that the Lord had all power. We were having church over on Main Street across from Old Blunt High School, out in the open, Brother Cooper. We sitting out there praising God for a chamber playing music, and we looked up and the sky was black. I was like, Lord, how much? But I knew who was in control. I walked in the building and I spoke it because the Lord said, "Speak to the mountain." So I spoke to that cloud in the name of Jesus. I spoke that it would not rain and that we would be able to have service and have a good time. I'm here today to tell you, and I have witnesses, we went right through that service. The clouds stayed black, 
It did not rain until we finished service, packed up, and was leaving. So don't you know God can do? You just got to learn what to do. Speak it in the name of Jesus, and it will come to pass. Right. If you turn, see, the thing about it is you got to turn it over to God. You got you to turn everything over to God. Amen. You can't do nothing. The Bible done told us that we can. Yeah, Lean not to your own understanding, because your own understanding will mess you up, church. But when you put it in God's hand, when you give it to God, when you just stop and say, Brother Chandler, Lord have mercy. That's all you got to pray right there. Right. Your answer is already done. Amen. God is already working it out there. You turn it to him. You let him know I can't handle it, so I'm giving it to you. Right. You have turned it over to the one that has all power. Yes. Not a little power, but he have all power. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will use his power as he see fit. Amen. 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 Well, brother preacher, you tell us about this power. How can I rely on the power of God? Glad you want to know that. I'm, I'm going to give you a little answer. We often hear about the power of God, of his greatness, and how we can rely on it to get us through difficult trials such as a job loss, a sticky divorce, bankruptcy, hateful persecutions, suffering through a debilitating illness, or loss of a loved one. So we ask, just how powerful and great is God? And more importantly, how can we rely on the power of God? My buddy, the Apostle Paul, gives us a glimpse of this power in his letter to the Ephesians, where he states, And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, when he raised him, Jesus, from the dead, and seated him at his right hand, in the heavenly places. You can find that in, in Ephesians 1, 19-20. The Greek word translated greatness is megalos, which means strong or great. And it appears only here in the New Testament. This word obviously wasn't sufficient for Paul to express God's great power. So he adds the word surpassing or uh, huberbelo, which in the Greek literally means to throw beyond the usual mark. God's power is beyond what we look at you. Amen. Amen. God's power is something that we as human beings really can't understand. Because God's power is above everything that we have ever thought about or seen. So the full idea of the expression Hubabelo, Megapos, is a power that is beyond myth. Super abounding or surpassing power. Power that is more than enough. That's God's power, church. God's power, and we'll put it like this, is more than enough. All right. Amen. God's power is more than enough. Amen. God's power is what? More, More than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Greek authorities tell us that because this term, Megapus, is found only here in all the New Testament, this reflects the outreach of Paul's mind when he sought to describe this power of God. His attempt at stretching at the seams as he tries to pour more meaning into these words. See, Paul poured everything into that to let us know that God's power is above everything. Jesus the Christ's power is above all things. When the Lord says, it, it's done. When the Lord says that you are healed, it's done. All right. 
when the Lord says that you are delivered, it's done. If you believe it. I had to put some brakes on. You know, you, you've got to believe it yourself. If you believe it, God will do it. If you trust God, Lord, I, I, I just can't get away from the word trust in the Lord with all thine heart. If you trust God and you believe God, then you know that it's already done. My knee may hurt, but I believe and trust God that one day it will not. For he is the one with the power. God is the great I am. Before Abraham was, there was Jesus. All right. Amen. Because he is who? God in the flesh. So therefore, Abraham didn't work. He went about and did. He, he had a little weakness at first. That, you know, I'm, I'm 100 years old. My wife is 90 something years old. And you say, I'm going to have a baby. Man, please. <laughs> But then Abraham had to realize who he was talking to. He was talking to the one that has all power. The one that is all powerful. The one that fixes everything. The one that made us. The one that created us. The one that created the world. If he did all this for a change, don't you know he can go on your job and straighten things out? Amen. If he did all this for a Cooper, don't you know he can move your mountains and come Amen. your way? If he did this, Sister Carter, don't you know he can touch your family? Don't you know he can move in your house? Don't you know that he can turn things around? Amen. My God. I, right. I call it my God. Cause see, some of y'all may be worshiping something else. But I know that his name is Jesus. Amen. I know that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee. shall bow. That's right. Every knee. Now, that I, I, I'm telling you this because I want you to know where your power is. All power is in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell right. sickness you have no place here. Tell pain you have no place here. Tell your job. God is in control. Amen. When your supervisor look at you and roll her eyes or his eyes, <laughs> smile back at him. All right. And don't even have to speak. When you smile, let it be in the name of Jesus. That's right. Because at the name of Jesus, that madness or that sadness, that, That's right. that, that, that thing in his heart, it must bow. That's right. It's got to bow. Not that it may, it shall bow. Why? Because that's God. Amen. And when God says it, you don't have to look for no other answer. If you don't believe me, ask for a change. Right. One time I had to tell the brother, you better be careful what you ask me, God. You better be careful what you're speaking. I'm tired of this, but they, I'm tired of that job. Pastor, I'm tired of that job. At the while, the Lord let them know, I hear you pray. I'm going to take you off of that job. I'm going to let you rest for a while. <laughs> then you can go back to work. I never heard him say another time, I'm tired of that job. Every time I see him, sure, he'd be raising his hand, thank you, Jesus. I said, yeah, he learned that lesson, did he? <laughs> he, he learned that God's in control. Not your supervisor, not you, but God. And when you trust God, God's going to work everything out for your good. That's what's wonderful, church, about God. When God work it out, he works it out for your good. Amen. Ain't no if and but. You can go ahead and start shouting. You can go ahead and start praising God. Because when your praises go up, some lovely blessings going to come down. Thank you, Jesus. So we give God the praise and honor. See, God's power exceeds or surpasses everything. I'm going to tell you that again. God's power exceeds or surpasses everything. The God who not only spoke the universe into existence, but who raised Jesus from the dead, and who put all things in subjection under his feet 
and gave him as head over all things to the church, has power far beyond any possibility of being thing to the church. He has power far beyond any possibility of being measured. Paul simply could not say enough about the greatness and majesty of God, and even using language as exact as Greek, he still had difficulty finding the words to express his thoughts. Right. If Paul had those difficulties, don't you know we may have those difficulties? But see, that's the reason God put you here. So you understand that his power is above everything. Yes, it is. And that he can do anything. Yes, and he will do it right now. Whatever the problem is, so the, the Lord tells you to have faith in God. If you have faith in God, he said, you can speak to yonder mountain, and yonder mountains will move if you feel with the Spirit. Right. That's Tarkin saying that. I speak because I've learned. The Lord has learned me to put my faith and my trust in him. And if I do that, he'll do things that you ain't never seen. I, I look back on a woman named Maddie Tart, my mother, that at one time had run out of money, had no money, but she trusted God that God was going to make a way. And she sit on her front porch and pray. People used to always pass by that Miss Maddie on the porch. But they didn't know that she'd be out there talking to the master, talking to the Lord. So. She started claiming victory for Cooper. She started claiming that God was going to give her the money that she needed to make payments on her bill. All right. She didn't cry. She didn't scream. She spoke it. She spoke it in the name of Jesus. And she didn't know how it was coming or where it was coming from, but she said after a while that she kept praying and as the Holy Ghost continued to move in her, she looked on the grass in her yard, and that was money blowing across the yard. Hallelujah. Amen. She was able to pick up enough money to pay for her bill, to pay the things that she needed to pay. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but when she told me that, I said, thank you, Jesus, because he made a way out of nowhere. God don't, God, see, see, God is not concerned about if you don't have it, God will give it to you. I don't have the money. I don't have a way of going to get the money, Lord. The Lord will say, put your trust in me. Trust in me and I will make it happen. <laughs> that's the thing that's great about God. God will make something happen. Amen. All you got to do is what? Trust God. Put your faith and your trust in God. God has all power. There is no other power. By God's power. Satan don't have no power. That's right. Satan has a little stuff he can suggest to you. But God has the power to make it happen. Yes, he does. Amen, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So why aren't you trusting God? Why aren't you believing God? Why don't you know that God said it? God's going to do it. God put it into action, so it's going to happen. Whatever is going on in your life, know that God is in control. And God can and will, and will. work it out. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is just trust God. Quit, quit worrying about stuff. Quit worrying about how I'm going to pay this or how I'm going to pay that. Start praising God for the money you're going to get. Amen. Start thanking God for the way that he's already made. God has made a way out of no way. And here you are worried. Your stuff already done. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Speak, I am blessed. Speak, I am delivered. Speak, I am healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He'll never fail. If you trust the Lord, he'll show the word. You belong to him. 
you can go along, you can sing praises, you can, you can holler about you love the Lord, but do you truly believe God? All right. Do you truly trust God? Do you truly understand who God is? All right. God has all power, all power. and it's all come through his son, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Man. If he did it for Daniel, he'll do, do it, it for me. That's right. If he did it for the Hebrew boys, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Abraham and Sarah, he'll do it for us. God can do anything because he's been here forever. God knows what's going to happen in the end, and God knows what happens in the beginning. That's right. And on top of that, praise God, he's in control of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, that's what we got to be thankful for. That God, I'm going to back it and say it again. God can hmm. and God will. He'll move a mountain. He'll heal your body. He'll deliver you from evil. He'll come in and put you where you need to be. Because he is God. And as long as you trust God, he'll make it happen. Don't you know I have more trust and faith in God than a mustard seed? My faith is bigger, Cooper, than a mustard seed. And I know that if it's bigger than a mustard seed, it's already done. Because I don't put my trust in the Lord. Amen. I know God's going to work it out. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to take me nowhere for nobody to anoint me. I know how to pray to God, and I know what the Word has said. It tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Not no weapon at all. That's right. Can't nothing do me no harm. But I have to praise the Lord, Mother Carter, and I have to tell everybody, can't nobody <laughs> do, do me, me like that. <laughs> All right, man. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Amen. He's my Amen. mother. He's my father. He's my sister. He's my brother. And above all, he's the best friend I ever had. All right. His right. name is Jesus. Right. The one that has all power. The one that has all might. The one that has all strength and the one that can do anything but that. Amen. And so that you will have an understanding, I ask you again to read these scriptures during the week to see about the power of the Lord. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20 through 21. John chapter 8, verse 58, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and Philippians again, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. And when you read those, you tell yourself, I know the one that can do anything but faith. 